Pigeonhole. 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 I have to start recording in order to come in the closet. <laughs> Because I keep the laptop out there so you don't get that noise. Oh, wait, hold on. Ah, crap. Hold on, my audio interface dropped. Hold on one second. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Hold on. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is all on recording. Oh, my gosh. This is awful. I'm definitely putting out the bloopers. I always say I'm going to do a blooper reel. Yeah. I think I'm comfortable with myself nowadays that I can do this blooper reel. This is going to be a good one. I don't know what just happened. My headphones came out, but my audio interface fell off this little makeshift shelf in my closet here. Let me explain it now to you. All right, so the interface is sitting on this little container that I have some, you know, some clothes socked away in. And the phone, I was like, okay, I gotta keep the phone somewhere so she can hear me. So it's in a suit jacket that I have. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like perfect, at the perfect height. So I was like, okay, so this, this will work. I am sitting in the closet myself, and when you said suit jacket, I thought, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Hi. Oh, look at that. My speech came back on. Hi. All right, there we go. Oh, wait, I got to put this back so you can hear me. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, I'm just going to hold the phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No one will know. <laughs> oh, man. I was really, really early into the idea of podcasts and, and knew that I wanted to do that, but wasn't equipped at all to do it. I didn't know what my content would be. Didn't feel comfortable at that time really probably telling my own story I was doing some audio creation on advocacy issues for the Pennsylvania Council of the Blind. They were getting better, and I was just doing more of it, more of it, more of it. And in 2014, was like, hey, let me go for this. I've been wanting to go to the Third Coast Festival for quite some time. i never forget, it was one Saturday night. I was just kind of sitting there, you know, perusing the internet. And I went over to the Third Coast Festival site to see what was the itinerary. I saw that they were looking for new voices and people who were representing diversity. The first level of diversity, actually, that I thought of was the disability. Yes, I'm a Black man, but I was doing more work on the disability side of things, right? Talking more about those issues. Based on the questionnaire, I was like, eh, I don't think they're going to get any new Blind people. I was, I was like, so I should be the only blind guy, right? I said, I got to get it. I'm black and I'm blind. I said, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> you know? And, and fortunately, I did get it. And I wasn't the only blind person, surprisingly. I was not the only blind person. And I also had the aspect of, I don't know if I belong here because all of these people have been really creating audio. They've been, you know, on NPR these guys are Radiotopia and whatever. And I was just like, I was just this, this guy. And I was specific about kind of where I wanted to go. And, and it was the whole idea of using storytelling to dispel myths and misconceptions about blindness. That was my main goal at that time. So a lot of people got that. What's up, RMM Radio family? It's me, T. Reed, host and producer of this here podcast. This is your place to hear stories and profiles of compelling people impacted by all degrees of vision loss and disability. 
Occasionally, I had some of my own experiences adjusting to becoming blind as an adult. And in each case, pairing words, music, and sound design. Today, I want to jump right into it. We have a lot to cover. I think my goal has changed. It's still storytelling, but the idea of dispelling myths and misconceptions, I'm starting to think I don't have as much control of that as I like to believe. It's really up to the listener whether or not they're going to change how they think. I can put everything out there, right? But some people are not, they're not going to change. They're not going to get it. So I don't think I should put that pressure on myself to say that this is what I'm trying to do. I don't think I'd ever be able to win trying to change the world like that. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting to be an old man. I don't know. It's, it kind of sounds like that when I say it out loud. But I don't necessarily think of it as a bad thing. I mean, I think I, I still want to tell the stories that I want to tell. And I want to find them and learn how to tell them better. I've always wanted people who are adjusted to blindness or to anything, quite honestly, in their lives. I'm always interested in that part of it. So what did you do to adjust to your blindness, right? To your vision loss? And how did it turn out? I find that helpful for me, but you know, I wanna learn something from these people. I think we all have something to learn from one another. So in the beginning, I was always like, ah, oh, I don't want nobody to put me into this position where, you know, no, it's not just about blindness. It's not just, it's called read my mind. It's whatever's on my mind. And then it ended up being, yes, it's a lot of things about blindness, everything about blindness. But the truth is that it doesn't matter what you want to touch. You can touch it from the disability perspective. And that's sort of where I want to go. Just talk about everything from that perspective. but. The thing that I would really want to do is to, to develop a team of people with disabilities who are producing stories about people with disabilities on a high level. So I want to get myself up a level. I don't necessarily want to be sitting in my closet. <laughs> but, you know, just really good stories and real good topics, you know diving into them and making them accessible to, to everyone, I don't believe everyone is going to come and check it out. Because I just think when it's stamped blind, when it's stamped disabled, people just say, oh, that's not me. And they don't, they don't listen to it. And I'm okay with that now. At first, I was like, ah, oh, you got to listen. And no, if you don't want to listen, you don't listen. But there are going to be some good stories that you're missing out on. And they're going to be told well, you know? You know, it's funny because thinking about it, I mean, the podcast, I guess it really is kind of following my own progress in my own adjustment because that wanting to change the world when I lost my sight, it was like, okay, now I'm this, this is what I'm told I am like, and it's like how people respond to me now so differently. And so it was like that wanting to change the world. Like, not just for the world, but also change the way the world is viewing me. Now it's like, well, it is what it is. This is who I am. This is a part of me. I know this is just one part of me. And I really don't care what you guys think anymore. This is just what it is. Which is all right with me. I'm good with that. I really am good with it. I feel it's a lighter load. <laughs> I'm not keeping that whole, you know, I got to change the world thing on my shoulders. That, that stuff is heavy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'm still recording, so I have to break this down. So let's see, hopefully I don't literally break down while I'm breaking down my setup. My DIY. Some people like to say ghetto. I think it's just a DIY thing. I think the ghetto had the negative connotation and there's nothing negative about setting up a DIY situation. You use what you use, what you have to get done. All right.
Every episode is transcribed. Links, guest info, and transcripts are all at whoamitostopit.com, my disability arts blog. I'm Cheryl. And this, this is, is Pigeonhole. 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 Don't sit where society puts you. <laughs> <laughs>